Liz, and this is Fit Liz Kitchen, where it's Liz, that's me, getting fit, well, trying anyway, in the kitchen. Um, so if you're new here, I am Liz, and I make recipe videos, and I eat a whole food, plant-based, no oil, salt, or added sugar diet, and this is just the way I eat for longevity and health, um, but also for weight loss. Um, so I am working on losing weight. Um, as of the time of filming this video, I have lost 118 pounds. Um, yeah, I lost only one pound since the last video I filmed, but that's because I'm filming them uh, back to back. Um, so yesterday I was 117 and today I'm 118 uh, down. Uh, 117 pounds down and today I am 118 pounds down. Um, so anyway, uh, <laughs> long story short, uh, that's how I eat to lose weight. And this is one of my new favorite weight loss meals. I have to share it with you because it's so delicious and exciting and colorful. Um, this is, if you can't tell, this is a plate of bell pepper nachos. Yes, I am using halved mini bell peppers as the tortilla chips. Um, definitely not the same as tortilla chips, but they are crunchy, they have some sweetness, and they are good for you. Um, packed with nutrients and delicious uh, and lowering calorie. Um, and then I have uh, topped them with black bean mushroom taco crumbles, which I'll show you how to make. Um, edamame guacamole, which I will show you how to make. Um, not the same as avocado guacamole, but it does taste really good and it's much lower in fat. Um, it has lots of nutrients in there too and protein. Um, pico de gallo, which I will not show you how to make because this is store-bought. Um, and I have a nacho cheese sauce, which I will show you how to make because that's low fat and delicious. So yeah, this recipe uses a lot of beans. We got black beans, we got edamame, we got silken tofu, which is also soybeans. Um, but that's because I eat a lot of beans um, and whole grains and uh, potatoes, starchy vegetables as my sustenance, um, as well as large uh, quantities of uh, lower calorie, non-starchy vegetables, leafy greens, and fruits. Um, and I eat a very limited amount of dietary fat, um, and that is a long way of saying uh, I can't wait to get into this recipe with you. Um, and first, I just have to say um, thank you for being here. Thank you for watching my video. Um, please like the video if you like, give it a like if you liked it. Um, and please leave me a comment. Please be nice um, if you have anything you want to say about the recipe, any questions, um, any requests for future videos or recipes. Um, and also, um, if you're new here, please hit the subscribe button and join us. So I post a new recipe or a new other kind of video, like a what I eat in a day video, um, every week. Uh, and I post also new recipes to my website, which is in the description box below. Um, so I will just get in this recipe and yeah, I hope you like it. All right, so now we're going to make the black bean taco, we'll call them crumbles. Um, it is there, they do end up kind of like crumbles if you cook them um, for 10 to 15 minutes, but if you don't care, then you can just, it, the mixture, the consistency will be kind of like um, refried black beans, which would also be delicious, um, which also you could just use refried beans. Um, they have oil-free varieties uh, at the grocery store. I've seen them. Um, I don't think they're uh, low sodium though, so depends on what you want. Um, I like this because it has a ton of mushrooms, um, and this is a great recipe if you are okay with the flavor of mushrooms sometimes, which they're kind of hidden in this anyway. It's not a real strong mushroom flavor, um, but you don't like the texture. So this is a great way to sneak them in or for people who don't like veggies. So that was a lot of mushrooms. That's like a pound of mushrooms. You don't have to do that many mushrooms. Um, that's just what I like to do. I like to do a lot of mushrooms. Um, and I have a can of no salt added black beans here, which I've drained and rinsed. And I'm going to pulse these. You can blitz them up totally fine, or you can just um, pulse them until they're crumbly, some kind of texture. You don't want everything to get too pulsed up you can stop and kind of stir everything around make sure those bigger mushrooms get kind of close to the bottom I suppose if I wanted this to be really chunky what I could have done is just dice 
the um, mushrooms. And you don't even have to have a food processor to do this. You could um, just mash up the beans with a fork, kind of like in my chickpea tuna salad, um, which is in the most recent What I Eat in a Day video that I published, um, which as of now is the only one. Um, or you could do black beans, um, do it, you could mash the black beans and then you could just finely dice the mushrooms and stir it all together, and that would also work. Okay, so that's what I'm going to stop it at. We still have some chunkiness, but remember that it's gonna cook down too. So I'm gonna remove the blade carefully. And I'll show you what I've got going on here. I've got Kind of this looking mixture. Um, most of it's finely chopped. You can still see a few chunks of mushrooms are going to shrink down. So this is a very wet mixture right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this into a pan and I'm going to cook it on a skillet um, over uh, medium heat for 10 to 15 minutes. I'm going to sprinkle all these spices on there, which you can find the full recipe in the description below. But basically I have my own homemade taco seasoning. You can use a store-bought taco seasoning. I don't because they always have salt and sometimes sugar. So this one, ha this has garlic powder, uh, oregano, uh, smoked paprika, cumin, and chili powder. And then I, for the saltiness factor, I have dulse flakes here. Um, you could also add miso paste, but I didn't want to add more moisture. Um, and the dulse flakes turned out really, really good. And I promise it doesn't taste like seafood or seaweedy. They're very neutral in this. They just add a little bit of that salty kick. This is my favorite skillet of all time. This is an all clad nonstick skillet. Unlike cheaper brands, the nonstick used in all clad is safe. And I had this skillet for like five years and I love it. Okay, so now my skillet is preheated, so I'm just gonna add this mixture and kind of spread it out. So I'm gonna babysit this while I do other things, um, just stirring it occasionally to make sure that nothing burns and everything dries out evenly. You're basically just drying out the mixture and then when it's thoroughly dried out, we just kind of crumble it with our cooking spatula. Um, if you didn't want to babysit it, you could just spread it out on a baking sheet and pop it in the oven and dry it out that way. A spatula here that's meant for this. Spread it out. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all of those spices that I mentioned and I'm going to pop them onto the top of the bean mixture, bean and mushroom mixture. And I'm going to take this spatula again and I'm just going to stir everything around. And I suppose I could have mixed this in in the food processor, but I wanted to be sure that it gets really evenly distributed. Um, and since I was pulsing, I wasn't sure if it was going to get super evenly distributed. You can see the texture is very much like re refried beans right now which would be okay if you wanted to stop here, or if you wanted to heat this for a few minutes just until it heated up, and then scoop it onto your nachos, that would be totally cool. That's pretty good. I'm gonna let that sit for a few minutes and um, stir it just every few minutes and make sure nothing's burning. So first we're gonna make the edamame guacamole because it needs to chill. I really like it cold. I have thawed edamame, thawed shelled edamame here. Um, and I'm going to dump this in my blender. Uh, now I have some lime juice. And this is to taste. Do as much or as little as you like, depending on how um, acidic you want it. And then I'm going to do some water. I'm going to do about half the water I need first, just so I don't overdo the water. I have a little bit of miso paste here. This is to add the saltiness. Um, if you don't want to do miso paste and you eat salt, you could totally just do salt. I have a reason. <laughs> um, I will put the link uh, in the description box below about why 
I eat miso instead of salt. And here I have some spices. I have granulated onion, granulated garlic, um, and parsley. Um, you could also do cilantro, but my partner does not like cilantro, so I'm doing parsley. And then I'll put cilantro on my plate. I like it. Okay, that's, that's actually all we need. Um, I'm gonna blend it. And you can blend it a lot if you like it uh, really uh, creamy like a sauce um, and you might need more water if you want to do that. But if you want it chunky, you can just kind of blend it until it's the desired texture. I kind of like it mostly blended, but with a few kind of small chunks still in there. Unlike my hummus, which I like really smooth. Unless it's spinach artichoke hummus, in which case I like that chunky. Who knows? So I got my tamper here. Uh, this will help me kind of blend it up. If you don't have a tamper, just stop and scrape down your blender every few 20 seconds, I don't know, every so often. I'm gonna take a look at this and see if it's where I like it. Stay. So, I don't know if you can see this, but it's kind of a very thick paste now. It's a very slight bit chunky, um, but it's mostly blended. You don't see any whole edamame still in there. So I'm going to give this a try. Mm. It's so delicious. You can really taste the lime. You can taste the garlic and the onion, but they're not too strong. Um, and the edamame just has a nice neutral flavor. It does taste rich like guacamole. It's obviously not as creamy. It's not as fatty. That's just the nature of edamame guacamole. It's just different, um, but I really like it. So I'm going to transfer this into a bowl. So I'm going to scrape all this out with my handy dandy blender spatula. If it's one small tool that's made a big difference in my kitchen, it's, you know, really inexpensive too makes it really easy to scrape out the blender. Still a task I don't really like, but I do want to get all the deliciousness out of there. This bowl might actually be too big, but that's okay. I did not want the add-ins to get blended up during the blending process, so I'm gonna mix them in now. I have a very small chopped red onion. You could use white onion or green onion, whatever you like, or skip it. If you don't like that, just use what you like. Um, if I were not sharing this, I would stir in some chopped cilantro, but I am sharing it. Um, and now I have some chopped tomatoes that I'm gonna add. I did cut out the part that's super liquidy in the tomato, so it didn't um, make my uh, edamame guacamole too wet, if that makes sense, watery. So I'm going to kind of stir this in. Now it's a big enough bowl. Now it's a, the right size bowl. In fact, maybe too small, but I will slowly stir this in. So you could even do more tomato here if you want it super chunky, and more onion. I like it like this. I think this is perfect for my purposes. This would be great if you wanted to make your own tortilla chips by just like cutting up corn tortillas and baking them or air frying them. I like to squeeze a little bit of lime on them before I do that. Um, I'm not doing that today because we have bell pepper nachos to put them on. Um, but this is all also really good with like raw veggie sticks. Um, you could also, we really like to eat fries and guacamole. So we make air fryer, like oil free potato fries and then we dunk them in this. That's really good. And it's really filling because potatoes are filling and edamame is filling. All right, so there we go. I have my nice big bowl of edamame guacamole. If you wanted, you could add some black pepper. You could add, like I said, you could add cilantro. You could add parsley if you don't like cilantro. I'm just gonna leave this as is. There's already dried parsley in the recipe. Um, and I kind of like this just as it is. So I'm really excited to eat this and I'm gonna refrigerate it for later. So let's make the nacho cheese sauce now. Got my blender. 
Here I have a block of silken tofu. Um, I'm gonna put this into the blender. This is a 16 ounce block, but if you only have <laughs> the silken tofu that comes in the, the little aseptic containers, you just might need two of them. If you didn't wanna do silken tofu, you could do white beans, which would also be low fat, um, or potatoes. Uh, boiled potatoes um, and if you are okay with a little bit of uh, dietary fat then you could do raw cashews raw sunflower seeds you could do a combination of those things that would be good um, here I have just one of those small cans of bio roasted green chilies um, those do have sodium in them so I try not to use this too often uh, and I'm not really eating the entire batch of nacho cheese sauce. I'm splitting it into at least eight portions. So I'm not getting that much of the sodium. Um, but if I wanted to totally avoid it, and if you want to too, you can fire roast your own. You could roast your own green chilies in the um, oven. You could do red chilies. You could just add in some cayenne pepper or more hot sauce, which is what I'm doing. Now I'm going to add a little bit of miso paste. That is for saltiness and again, the reason for why I eat miso paste instead of salt will be in the description box below. I have a little bit of lemon juice, but uh, any kind of vinegar you have should also work, except maybe balsamic. I'm not sure that flavor profile would work here. I think I'm gonna stir this. Um, so now I have some nutritional yeast, which gives it a cheesy flavor. I have a bunch of spices here again. I have granulated onion, granulated garlic, mustard powder, turmeric, uh, black pepper, thyme, and smoked paprika. The turmeric is purely for color, so, and it has anti-inflammatory pro properties, but I don't think it adds much to the flavor here, so um, if you don't like that, then you can leave it out. So I'm gonna blend this into, oh, I almost forgot most important part of nacho cheese sauce, something spicy. Um, this is not that spicy. Cholula, um, you know, I have friends who are like Cholula is not spicy. Um, <laughs> but I like Cholula. Uh, my stomach can't really handle super spicy stuff. Um, my partner's better about it than I am, but... And this definitely has sodium. Uh, one teaspoon has 110 uh, milligrams, but I'm not using a whole teaspoon. And like I said, I'm not eating this entire batch. I'm eating like an eighth of it. And again, if you didn't want to add any, oops, if you didn't want to add any added sodium, then you could just add cayenne pepper or red pepper flakes or whatever spicy stuff you like to add. And blend this until it's super smooth. stop halfway through and scrape down the sides. Once in a while, if I'm using a lot of spices, they'll sometimes get stuck on the side and I want all that spice stuff mixed in. Delicious. Now's a good opportunity to um, taste it. That is so good. It tastes like nacho cheese sauce. Oh my God, that's so good. It's gonna be delicious. All right, now we have our nacho cheese sauce. This looks delightful. It's a nice thick cheese sauce. Um, if you need to thin it out, you could. If it's not thick enough, you could add some nutritional yeast um, or potato flakes to thicken it up. Um, that's gonna cook for a little bit longer. Let's see here, I have at least six minutes left on the timer. Plus, sometimes it's 10 to 15 minutes, um, all depending on how much moisture is in there. Uh, so I will be back. Um, I'm going to chop up the bell peppers um, so that they're ready to make delicious nachos, and I will see you soon. All right, so here is the mixture. As you can see, it has pulled away from the bottom of the pot, and I can, not with an oven mitt, I can break it up into little pieces. And if you wanted this to be really crispy and crumbly, you could even just let them dry out in the pan um, if you make this ahead of time. I kind of like them like this because they make the, whole, the rest of the plate kind of warm 
because otherwise everything's pretty raw and I would like some warm food tonight. So yeah, so I'm just gonna put this in a bowl and then I can start building the nachos. So I've got my black bean nacho taco crumbles, black bean taco crumbles there. Um, it's kind of hard to say. Um, so let me get a spoon. If these were cool, you could kind of crumble them up by hand, um, but they are not. Um, but yeah, if you want to make this in advance, you totally can. You can make all of these elements in advance and then literally just chop up the bell peppers and serve nachos. Um, and you can do this with regular bell peppers. You could do it with veggie sticks. Oh, what I really love doing it with is um, air fried, air fried potato wedges or circles, um, baked sweet potato, like the circles. Those are all really great nachos. Or you can make your own chips, like I said before, with um, with corn tortillas. Just cut them up and put them, put a little lime juice on them um, and bake them or air fry them. Uh, so yeah, anyway, I'm gonna start building these. What I like to do is put the uh, taco crumble on first. I'm not really concerned if some just gets on the plate because then you can just, eat all the little bits on the plate afterward. Like when you eat a taco and all the stuff falls out and then you have like a taco bowl with all the stuff on it. That's fun. The only funny thing about this recipe is that because black beans are so dark, this kind of looks like dirt. Um, <laughs> but I assure you it is delicious. I have another plate of these bell peppers in the background. That one is for my partner. So that's why I'm only gonna use about half of this mixture. I'm also gonna give a heavier hand of this to their plate because they are very tall <laughs> and can eat more calories than I can and still lose weight. How fair is that? Um, which, Totally fine. I'm not resentful. I'm proud of them. Uh, I think that's pretty good. I still want to be able to see the nice color of the bell peppers. Um, so, so you can see. I just want to try this. Oh my god. It's so good. It's not super salty, but we have some saltier things here since the miso. So it's just kind of perfect. Um, you want to be fancy, you could use like a small cookie scoop. I've used a melon baller. But right now I am just so hungry and I want to eat everything. Like I said, I really don't care if any just gonna gets on the plate because I'll just scoop it up and eat it with my spoon afterward. Um, now I have some pico. I'm gonna eat the majority of this pico because it does have, it's store-bought so it does have cilantro in it and my partner does not enjoy that. Now my nachos, my uh, bell peppers are definitely getting kind of buried under all this stuff, but you know what? That's what happens with nachos. I think that's pretty good. A little bit more there. <laughs> um, this is definitely not necessary. I put the cheese in, the nacho cheese sauce in a squirt bottle um, <laughs> um, because it's kind of fun to do a zigzag across the top, but you could definitely just pour the cheese sauce mixture on top. So I'm going to give this a really good drizzle. And I'm going to go back the other way a couple times just to get a lot on there. So here we have our big bell pepper nacho plate. Um, and I really hope you give this recipe a try. I know there's a lot of moving parts, but you can make the nacho cheese in advance. And if it thickens too much in the fridge, just blend it up with a little bit of um, non-dairy milk, unsweetened, um, to revive it. Um, you can, if you're making your pico, you can make that in advance. You could just buy it like I did. You can make the edamame guac in advance too, which I actually recommend because I like it cold. Um, and then you have the black bean taco crumbles, which you can also totally make in advance. You can heat them back up when you're ready to eat them. You can bake these in the oven if you don't want to make them on the stovetop. And then all you have to do is 
slice up the slice the bell peppers in half the little mini bell peppers or you could do regular sized bell peppers and just chop them in large chunks um, and make your nachos that way all right so all that's left now is to try it um, so I'm gonna pick one of these in front that I can see the corner of oh my god look at that that is loaded mmm that is so good it's like flavor explosion it's very crunchy very delicious i cannot wait to devour this plate um so i'm gonna go do that anyway i really hope you give this recipe a try and let me know what you think of it in the comments below give this video a like if you liked it and if you want to see more videos recipes and what i eat in the day and stuff like that then just hit the subscribe button and i look forward to sharing more videos with you in the future bye